Thank you. Um, so currently, I'm working at, World, at, at uh, Google. And, uh, but most of the talk today is going to be about my work I did at Walt Disney Company. This is not what I was doing. I was actually working for Disney Research Division. And, uh, the, but my core, core expertise and my history goes back to consumer electronic world. I spent eight years working for Sony Corporation. And what we were doing at Sony was building gadgets, right? And that was all consumer electronic companies do. We build gadgets. Uh, making them more colorful, cheaper, faster, more interactive. What's happening right now, however, is that the whole world is becoming a gadget. The whole world becomes interactive, full of color, and full of technology. Software is everywhere. And that uh, creates new and very exciting challenges for our interaction design. How can you interact with the entire world? Not with a gadget in your hand, but with the whole world. And oh, let's rephrase this question. How can we make the entire world interactive? The entire world, not the gadget, but the whole world around you. You know, the world is very big, so it's, it's a difficult problem. Now, working for Disney uh, make my life easier because I don't have to solve the whole world problem. I only have to solve a small part, which was Disney World. And we can, in this, my, the rest of my talk, I would like to show some of the ideas and some of the uh, lesson we learned and technologies we created to approach this problem, solving the whole world interactivity problem. So, uh, lesson number one: we have to give senses to the world, and we have to give it, give the senses non-invasively. If you put in software intelligence everywhere, it has to sense you as well. So, this is a project we did at, at uh, Disney. It's called Touche, and what it does is a very simple sensing system which takes everyday objects and makes them smart. In this case, we took a doorknob, and now you can recognize with a single wire, it can recognize that you touch with one hand, with two hand. You create a circle around the, uh, around the doorknob, or you're grasping with the whole hand. Let's look again. A single wire. You connect this wire to our sensor. And this is a doorknob we bought in, in a home depot, something like that. And now this, uh, this doorknob becomes intelligent. It can know how you're touching it, and can respond accordingly. Now, it doesn't have to be. Um, uh, can you go back, please, on the back slide? OK. Sorry. So it doesn't have to be a doorknob. It can be any object, any surface, such as table. In this case, the table knows uh, how you sit in front of it. Again, technology doesn't change. It's exactly the same sensor. With the one wire, this table becomes interactive. You know how you're sitting in front of it. It can be also a living, um, living object. For example, user's body itself. So now with the same sensor, with the same technology to share, we know how the user holding his own hands and how the user holding his own body. It can recognize when they're grasping hands or even when you're touching other parts of your body. It can also be other things, such as plants. By sticking electrodes into the plant, this plant will now can play, can, uh, can play music. Let's take a look at that. So as you slide your fingers on the, uh, on, the, on the orchid, you can see where you're touching the orchid. And these gestures can be remapped into, very, into various, um, you know, into the music. It can also test, uh, can, can, can remap it into the, into the visuals and it can sense proximity. So a very slight touch of the plant creates visual response. It's quite sensitive too. Or we can make a calendar out of plant. So I, I don't know why I would do this. I have no idea. <laughs> but you can, and that's what's important. You can do this. And now by combining that technology with visuals, we, create, we can create stories. We can create immersive experiences where each character, each plant would have a character and would reply in a certain way. So in this case, it's orchid. An orchid doesn't like to be touched. When you touch it too strongly, it starts hissing at you. Anyway, 
it can be useful as well. Maybe your plants will become your friends the next time, and you're going to sit next to you on the couch as watching TV. Who knows? So let me talk about the second lesson we learned. First of all, the second lesson is that you have to generate power locally. It doesn't matter where you produce power. It can be safety of nuclear power stations, or it can be, uh, you know, power generated from the sun. But the question is how are you going to deliver the power to the Internet of Things? You can't wire everything. This is a project which we did at uh, Disney, which explores how can you make interactive books by using very simple materials such as paper, uh, polyester, and wires. What you can do, you can create very simple structures like this. And now by tapping on the button, you can create electrical signals. And those electrical signals can be remapped now into the flashing LEDs and the interactive books. You can turn on e-paper, you can turn on displays, turn them on and off. And you can create animations, such as this case, hello. You can create physical motion just by rubbing a piece of paper without any battery. Or you can control external devices. All of that is done by generating power locally without having to put a battery or connect the wires. And that's very important for the Internet of Things, very important for the future uh, smart environments. You can also print or paint it. And now it can generate multiple, uh, you can lay up multiple images, as many as you want, actually. Or it can create a very large, it can also work in large environment. It can scale to the size of the building. In this case, two people riding on the both side, and it goes in and out depending who is rubbing strongly. My third, my third lesson is to make invisible displays. Today, interaction is mostly focused on visual information. We always see stuff. But what's going to happen is that when we, everything is covered display, how are we going to uh, communicate information? We created a technology, haptic technology, which communicate through vertices. So it's track positions of your hand as you move your hand around. It's called aerial. And that's how it looks like. So uh, we create the vertices flying out of the other device, and we can track position of the hand so you can feel information in space by your hand. So now as you play a game, for example, you can feel it hitting your hand. And with this technology, so you can start creating very complex experiences. And this is an example of that. So you put your, you put your, when you put your hand on, on, the, on the table, the butterflies come on your hand. And when you raise it up, you can feel the butterflies flapping wings on your hand, which is created by, the haptic, by two haptic projectors. And you have to take butterfly to the window. And it flies to freedom. It was a very, uh, very nice experience as we showed it multiple places, and people were really excited about it. So um, let me conclude. What we're talking right now is about kind of upgrading the world, right? We're trying to create technology which is going to turn our world into the world 2.0, right? The exciting point about it is that we don't really know how it's going to look like and how it's going to feel like. We're just in the process of creating that. And uh, we often assume it's going to look something like that. It's going to be more computing, more power, and so on. But maybe not. Maybe it's going to look like, like something completely different. Maybe it's going to look like that, where all the images are going to be removed and replaced with augmented reality markers. So you can, when you only see through glass, Google Glass, for example, some other display, you will see images on the world. Maybe that's how, you look, uh, maybe that's how your room is uh, going to look like uh, back in the house, devoted and barren and everything computer generated, right? Or maybe oppositely, your, your world is going to look like that, where everything is haptic and moving all the time, actuated, everything is robotic, and, com the, uh, and information is communicated through electrical signals coming through your body, through the objects around you. So the question is how the world 2.0 will look like, and that's the question to you. Thank you. <laughs>